start treating this for squash bug. There he is right there. You see him? Right there. Well, good morning, gardeners. I hope everybody's having a fantastic day. It is a nice warm day in zone 8A in North Carolina, but we are dancing in between rain showers, but that is not gonna stop us because we are going to talk about organic pesticides. Organic pesticides are super important, especially if you wanna keep your garden growing all year. And I'm gonna break down what I use in my garden. I'm gonna tell you where they come from, what it's safe to use on, when to use it. And then we're gonna go around and look at some stuff in my garden and see if it warrants using that certain pesticide. Just a quick note before we get started, I don't know if you remember a video two ago, I was talking about the potatoes starting to have gravity take over and them falling over. And I'd hope they'd fall this way. Well, it looks like they are starting to fall that way. So that is a good sign for us. It means that our beans we planted on the trellis might actually get some sunlight because these potatoes have just gone crazy and they're getting really big, but we need to do some treatments on them and look into the garden and see some other stuff. And I did a video and I brought up um, BT and that was kind of something somebody commented like, I know what neem oil is, but what the hell is BT? And so that kind of spurred this a little bit. I had already planned to talk about it, but I'm gonna start with neem oil and then I'm just gonna kind of work down the line. And this is all the stuff that I use in my garden. And so the first thing is obviously neem oil. So this is pure cold pressed neem oil. There's nothing else in here but neem oil. And neem oil comes from the seed of the neem tree in India. And it's a really good pesticide. You use it on a lot of like hard body insects and stuff like that. It targets the bad ones. And what it does is when you spray it on the plant, it does a couple things. One, it makes it unappetizing for them so they'll stop eating it. But two, when they ingest it, it'll cause them to not be, I believe it causes them not to be able to reproduce. And it also, if I'm remember, it does a lot of things. It'll also attack their stomach. So they basically starve to death. But what it can also do is treat fungal infections as well. And so it does the same thing with insects where it's, it's real thick and I'll show you in a second. And it'll actually harden on it. Not like you can visibly see, but it gets real thick and it'll smother them. And it can keep fungal infections from spreading by, smug by smothering it. So it's pretty cool. So there's multiple kinds you can get. This is the one I get. Um, it is cold pressed pure neem oil, which means there's nothing else in it, but the trick is it has to be warm in order to use it. And so I think it may actually be almost warm enough today. Let me get the top open and show you the difference. So you can see that it is a liquid right now. There you go, pour a little bit out. But if you come out and it's too cool, it I actually solidify. So it needs to warm up. And so a lot of times what I'll do is I'll put it in my greenhouse or you can even just set it in your house, something like that, and cause it to loosen up before you use it. Now the trick with this is you can't just go spray it by itself. You do have to add something to it. And luckily it's pretty cheap and easy to get. And we, I use a dish soap. So if you think about it, neem oil is an oil. You just add the oil to water, it's gonna separate. So this dish soap actually binds to the oil and causes it to disperse in the water so you can get a better spray. And when you use it, you do need to continuously be spraying it so that it'll, you know, I mean shaking it so that it'll mix up, but it will bind with this and put it in. So I use about two tablespoons per gallon of the neem oil and then probably about a tablespoon of dish soap. And the reason why I say probably is because I just kind of give it a good glug into it, but it'll kind of help, like I said, break it apart. And so uh, for all of these, I use a sprayer. Well, I was using this sprayer right here. This is a one gallon sprayer. I don't recommend this brand, but it has this angled tip on it. So I actually just got this one today. So we're gonna be testing this out soon or later on, but it has the angled tip. So you can spray it easier, but then you can also flip it upside down and then get underneath the leaves. Because that's where a lot of the bugs hide their, leaf, their eggs and stuff like that, it's under the leaves to protect them. So it just kind of helps you get a more even spread across the board. We'll come out into the garden and we'll look and see. I don't know if I need to use this just yet, but 
we're gonna kind of see what we got going on. I did try to use it on these potatoes for the ants and it seems like it actually did help after a couple days. So it takes a little while for it to kick in. It's not instant acting like some of your non-organic stuff where like it hits them and they die. It does have to kick in, but it looks like the ants are definitely down in that. And then like for this bed here, we've got squashes. And so this is gonna be a really good one for squash bugs. So you can spray it on the squash bugs and it'll help keep their numbers down. It doesn't work great on them, but it's definitely something that you can use to help with that. Um, for the rest of the crops here, I'm not really seeing anything that needs it. And the simple fact is it's really good for your summer plants. So all of our summer plants are just young enough where they're not really they're not really getting attacked yet. The weather is kind of in between, so it kind of is a little hit or miss, but it works good on aphids if you have them. Uh, usually with those, I start with like a dish soap and water. And then if that doesn't work after a couple days, I'll come back and use the neem oil and dish soap. But it works for most of your hard bodied insects. And it does not hurt honeybees and it does not hurt any of your pollinators or your good insects. So that's good. Um, how that works, I don't really know, to be honest. But this will really help keep you under control. You know, if it's gonna rain tomorrow, I wouldn't spray, but it's gonna rain in two days, so I can spray today. You don't wanna spray in the middle of the day because the oil can, unlike water, the oil can actually intensify on the leaf and actually cause it to burn. So you wanna do it in low sun, so it's like today it's cloudy. I'm hoping it's cloudy, it stays this way because we are gonna do some treating here in a few minutes for something else. Um, or at the end of the day, and especially when the pollinators are less active, because they don't, even though it doesn't hurt them, you still don't wanna spray them. So they'll go in back to their hives or go to sleep or whatever. So towards the end of the day, usually in the summertime, I come about five o'clock, 5.30, six o'clock, something like that, and I'll do my spraying. So a lot of us might be having issues right now with caterpillars and worms and moths, and this works really good for it. This is BT, which stands for, I'm gonna see if I can say it right, Bacillus thurgenis. And you, you use these for soft-bodied insects. This is what we're gonna treat, for to, treat with today, and then I'm gonna show you what we're gonna treat it for. But it's basically a naturally occurring toxin, toxin that occurs in the soil. And what they do is they take it out and they concentrate it. You spray it on, it has a very short life. So if it's sunny, it'll just kind of burn off quickly. The insect will eat it and it'll cause their stomach, it'll turn into a neurotoxin inside of their stomachs and basically kill them. So that way you can kind of get on top of it. And this works great for your cabbage loopers and stuff like that, especially if you catch them early enough. So if we come over here, we've got this Napa cabbage and we've done a treatment on them already, but you can see these holes, clearly they've gotten behind, and you can even see right here is the culprit. So, oops, I dropped them. So anyways, it's a little caterpillar, and you'll just take it and you'll spray it, and they'll eat it, and then in a couple days, they'll die off. So anytime you see something like this, this is mostly what I use it for, bam, you hit it with that stuff and it just it takes care of it. And now if you decide to treat for the tomato hornworm, it can work for that as well. Doesn't affect, again, it doesn't affect your pollinators or your beneficial insects at all. It has a short life, so it doesn't stay on the plants for a long time. Both of these, the neem oil or all of these, you can actually spray and then eat within a couple of days if you'd like, because they just, they have a short lifespan. So it works really well. Now, as far as treating with both of these, let's talk about that. So you see the damage, you see the culprit. I always revert very first to hand picking. So I'm a big proponent of hand picking. It's definitely icky at first, but you get used to it. But you hand pick it, that'll just kind of get your numbers down a little bit. But you've already got eggs on your plants because by the time you see them, it's too late. So you need to spray. And so what we do is we spray and then we come back in seven to 10 days and we spray again. And so what you're doing the first time is you're killing the adults. And then the next time you're killing the newly hatched eggs. 
and then you come back in seven to 10 days after that and you spray again and then you're just kind of cleaning up after that anything that may have been left over or anything like that so you definitely as long as you're spraying all sides of the leaves you're going to take care of that usually it, it does take some time but you start seeing progress right away and so like those napa cabbages you saw with all the holes in them they're actually going to be stunted now because they're going to try and be recovering from that which we're okay with on that crop we're not overly concerned about it but some of the other ones you might want to be on top of so you just kind of got to keep these in mind if you guys use any kind of treatment organic treatment or anything like that let us know in the comments below how it's worked for you and what you've used it on because it can definitely help other people because as the season ramps up we're definitely going to get a lot more pests and we need to stay on top of it all right let's mix up some bt what do you say so that's all you need so this should last me the whole year this little bottle is an eight ounce bottle and i'll use it through spring parts of summer late fall and into winter and usually in winter i don't have to treat as much because the cold gets them but this really it does help so um just mix it up and we'll go spray so it's a partly cloudy day so as soon as the sun goes behind in the clouds i can see which way it's going there are pretty heavy clouds going forward so now all we do is you just give it a nice overhead spray but the important part is this is pretty simple but the important part is you actually flip it and then hit the bottom sides of all the leaves too where everything's hiding and just make sure you coat every single side of it and i know that using this thing this pump and everything i had i was out using it i use the bt for my peach trees i spray them because there is actually a boring worm that can attack them. So it's recommended that you spray them and we'll spray them. And I was out front, I have a peach tree in my front yard and somebody walked by and they were like, oh, I can see you're not an organic gardener. And it's like, actually I am, this is organic. So it's just kind of one of those things. It has a bad connotation with it as far as the way that it looks having this big sprayer, but this is how it's done. It's a little early to be treating these squash, but since I have it mixed up, I'm gonna go ahead and give them a light spray just in case our little vine borer friend has decided to come early. And that way we can just kind of stay on top of it. Um, I don't really recommend just going out and spraying stuff just to spray it, but it makes sense if you know you're gonna have a pest issue come up because the vine borer comes every year, no matter what, so just in case we'll go ahead and give them a shot that way we can try and get a harvest before they inevitably kill our plants which will definitely happen all right so now that we've treated for worms and caterpillars let's talk about a maintenance spray routine so i do a maintenance spray routine but i don't just do it just to do it i have cues that set me off on when to do it and how to start doing it so a lot of times my maintenance spray routine Generally, it goes by season. So in the cooler seasons, when the worms and caterpillars are a problem, I'll do BT. And then in the summer, when, you know, all the summer crops and stuff like that, I'll do the neem oil. And usually what kicks it off is I'll come out and I'll start to see a pest. But while I was out spraying, I was checking on these potatoes and it gives me a good chance to take a real good look inside of each one and i saw a squash bug actually land in this area so this would cue me to start with a mate with a um, treating for squash bugs so i'd start treating this for squash bug there he is right there you see him right there there he is there he was what that means now is there's squash bug eggs right there so squash bug season just started as you saw it so we'll treat for it with neem oil and then we'll do it again in seven to 10 days. Then we'll do it again. And then what I'll do is even if I don't see anything once a month, I'll come out and I'll spray with the neem oil. And after a while, if everything gets good and I don't see any issues, then I'll stop. And then it'll kick back up as soon as I see another issue. So that way I'm always just kind of one step ahead. Even though a lot of life cycles of these bugs are between seven and 14 days to lay their eggs, then at least once a month, I'm kind of taking care of the problem somewhat. And that's the benefit of using these organic pesticides. 
So there are other organic products that you can use that you don't have to spray as much, but it's again, it's another chance for me to get more in tune with my crops and know what's going on. So we'll let this BT dry. It's gonna rain again in about two days, and then we're gonna get a period of dry weather. Then we'll come out and we will start spraying with the neem oil. And I'm not gonna spray everything though. I'm not gonna spray this right here. This is the onion and garlic. I'm not gonna spray this right here. I'm not gonna spray the kale back here. And I'm also not going to spray the tomato or the potatoes over there or the corn bed back there. Corn bread, corn bed. I got corn bread on the mind, obviously. That way, you know, not all crops need it. So you don't need to like broadcast it all on there. Oh, and I'm also not gonna spray these peas. So unless I see like an aphid outbreak and I'm already spraying, then I'll just go ahead and hit it. But that way I can kind of stay on top of it. So the affected plant will get it the first time and every seven to 10 days after that. And all the other ones will just be on once a month basis. So it kind of keeps me ahead of it. Now, there is a product that I'm going to start using and I haven't received it yet. So I'm not using it just yet, but it's called pyrethrin. I just think I'm saying it right, pyrethrin. And that's basically crushed up chrysanthemum leaves, which are mums, you know, everything that you guys get in the fall to put in your gardens and pots and stuff like that. The problem with that is it's a broadcast pesticide, which means it'll kill everything it comes in contact with. So I don't plan to use it unless I have a bad issue. And then I'll come out and I'll spray it and I'll have to really time it out right, time the day, time of day out right and all that. But if I have a bad issue that I can't get on top of, then I'll use that. So, you know, that's kind of like your secret weapon in your back pocket. But everything else we can kind of stay on top of and be using periodically. And that's going to really work out in your favor.